Father, Philip, we have come to drink. Throughout this meeting, it is a time of drinking, drinking the living water, drinking the water of life. Every time we come, it is to drink. So let's just start right away and say, Heavenly Father, fill me today with your spirit. Fill my cup, Lord. Fill my cup. Lord God Almighty, fill my cup. Fill my cup. Pour your spirit upon me, upon us afresh in this meeting today. We have come, Lord God Almighty, to drink from you, to drink the water of life. Lord, fill my cup. Fill our cup. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, our Lord and our God, in Jesus' mighty name. Now open your mouth and say, Heavenly Father, thank you for the success of yesterday. So thank you for the success of day one. Day one, the day of repentance and rededication. It was awesome. Lord, I thank you. Thank you, Almighty God, for how you helped us through successfully in day one. To you, our Father, be all glory in Jesus' name. Now, tell him, Father, thank you for the strength you have given unto us to wait upon you with prayer and fasting and reading and studying of your word in day two. Thank you, almighty God, for what you have done so far. Thank you, Lord, for bringing us to this moment, to this time of corporate prayer. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' mighty name. Now, tell him, Father God, Thank you for today's focus. It's our day of intercession. Intercession, Lord. Thank you. Thank you for this day, the day of intercession. Now, Lord, we hand over to you. And the Holy Spirit, the chief intercessor himself, the Holy Spirit, we hand over to you. And we ask that you will lead us. You will help us in every aspect, Lord, that we will intercede as you uh, expect of us and as you have ordained it to be, Lord God Almighty. Holy Spirit of God, lead us, the chief intercessor, we hand over to you. We ask that everything we will do will be led by you. Thank you, our Lord and our God, in the name of Jesus. Finally, in this uh, thanks and opening session, let us pray and say, Heavenly Father, let all glory be to you in this meeting. Oh, let all glory be to you. Come and manifest your glory. And let's pray. Say, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus. Yes, the one who intercedes for us continually at the right hand of the Father. Oh, be here with us. Manifest your power and your glory in this meeting. And let your name be mightily glorified. Let the Father be glorified. Let the Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, be glorified. Thank you, our Lord and our King. To you be all glory in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. And so our Heavenly Father, we are so grateful and thankful to you for today, day two, day of intercession. We ask, Lord, that you will take glory in this meeting, even as we have prayed and have agreed in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. So quickly, intercession. What do we mean? Intercession. You see, intercession is for us to come to God, to plead his mercy, to stand on behalf of ourselves and on behalf of all the people on behalf of uh, the nation, in anything, any situation, and plead God's mercy, and, 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 and also pray for a change, pray for the will of God to prevail. So when Jesus taught us in the Lord's Prayer, as we always uh, talk about, and say, your kingdom come, your will be done. Uh, in earth or on the earth, depending on what translation you're using, as it is in heaven. It was a prayer of intercession. So intercession is when we stand in the place, in the gap, to ask that God's will be done to bring to pass the blessings of God, the goodness of God. And let's not shy away. Intercession is often around 
standing against the works of the devil because the devil brings sin. The devil brings evil work. You see, these days, people don't want you to talk about the devil anymore. People don't want you to pray against the devil anymore. But I wonder where we got that from. Because the apostle Paul told us very clearly, he said, let us not be ignorant of the devices of the devil. And he also taught us uh, in the book of Ephesians, he said, we wrestle not against flesh and blood. So my brothers and sisters, don't let anybody begin to tell you, don't pray against the devil. In fact, the three principal duties that Jesus Christ has given us to do as the works that he's left us here to do, number one is to preach the kingdom of God through the name of Jesus. So sinners will repent and be saved. Number two is to cast out the devil, actually. No, and you can actually reverse the order because sometimes the devil will block people's mind and they will not even hear. And then number three is to heal the sick. <laughs> Heal the sick, they work the manifestation in healing the sick. You know, I've often told us that those works of the devil hinder people. And so God left us here to do those works. That's what Jesus call, calls the greater works. In the course of healing the sick, uh, raise up the dead, cleanse the leper, and other miracles that Jesus himself will wrought through us as he chooses to do. But these three clearly. He said, this he has ordained and commissioned us to do. You remember that in the book of Mark chapter uh, uh, 16. Yes, Mark chapter 16. If you read all the way from verse 15, all the way to the end with uh, verse 20. Glory be to God. So this is intercession. Now let's look at, so I was talking about Paul. Paul said in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12, which we know, for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this age, against the spiritual host of wickedness in the heavenly places. But let's focus on intercession. So when we see evil in the land, we are to intercede. You see that child that doesn't obey you, it requires intercession. That child that doesn't follow God, it requires intercession. The wickedness in your family, right on righteousness in the land, God wants us to intercede, beloved brothers and sisters. So, going all the way from Old Testament, you remember in Genesis chapter 18, Genesis chapter 18, verses 23, all the way to 33, we can't take all, but just to remind us, Abraham. Abraham. But before we go to that, let's just pick the key scripture, the key scripture that specifically talks about this intercession. Isaiah, let's look at Isaiah first. Isaiah 59, 16. Isaiah 59, 16, uh, depending on your translation. 16, it says, let me start from 15. 15, it says, so truth fails. And he who departs from evil makes himself a prey. Then the Lord saw it, and it displeased him that there was no justice. 16. He saw that there was no man, and wondered that there was no intercessor. Therefore, his own arm brought salvation for him, and his own righteousness, it sustained him. Let's look at Ezekiel, Ezekiel chapter 22. Verses 29 and 30. 29. The people of the land have used oppressions, committed robbery, and mistreated the poor and needy, and they wrongfully oppressed the stranger. 30. So I sought for a man among them who would make a wall and stand in the gap before me on behalf of the land that I should not destroy it, but I found none. <laughs> yeah, 31. Therefore, I have poured out my indignation on them. I have consumed them with the fire of my wrath. 
and I have recompensed their deeds on their own heads, says the Lord God. So in intercession, we plead, and we stand in the gap and ask God to do his will. Sometimes we also stand and enforce justice, especially against the wickedness of the wicked. Glory be to God. Intercession. Are you an intercessor? Are you ready? Because of, yes, yeah, so Genesis, quickly, Genesis that I talked about, Genesis chapter 18, just to remind us. And Abraham earned the title of intercessor even before God. Genesis chapter 18, you remember uh, the, uh, the story of Sodom and Gomorrah, when God wanted to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah, all the way from 23, all the way to 33, but we'll just uh, jump. Abraham stood in the gap. Look at Genesis 18, 23. He said, and Abraham came near and said, would you also destroy the righteous with the wicked? 24, suppose there were 50 righteous within the city. Would you also destroy the place and not spare it for the 50 righteous that were in it? 25, far be it from you to do such a thing as this, to slay the righteous with the wicked, so that the righteous should be as the wicked. Far be it from you. Shall not the judge of all the earth do right? <laughs> 26, so the Lord said, if I find in Sodom, 50 righteous within the city, then I will spare all the plates for their sakes. Now, know what happened here. The ju God's justice prevailed, but the intercession of Abraham delivered Lot and his family. Glory be to God. The Almighty God will deliver your family by your intercession. And the Almighty God will deliver your people by your, your nation, by your intercession. But don't be worried. God's justice will prevail on the wicked in the mighty name of Jesus. That was just to give us the example. So if you go to Ezekiel chapter, this Ezekiel chapter 14, then you will see God recognizing Abraham or recognizing, uh, sorry, three men, three men, um, uh, three men, rather, not Abraham, three men, Noah, Daniel, and Job as intercessors. Intercessors. Because when God wanted to destroy the people because of their sin, God said, even if these three men were in the land, he would not listen to them. So God recognizes intercessors. He knows that when there are intercessors, they will stand in the gap. That's the work and the duty of intercessors. Are you ready to intercede for your own self? Whatever thing in your life does not reflect the glory of God, you require intercession to stand in the gap on your behalf and on behalf of others. You require intercession to stand and call for the justice of God and the judgment of God to prevail against the wicked, against the work of the enemy. Are you there with me? So in intercession, we ask God, God's will to prevail and we stand against the works of the wicked. Now let's use John chapter 17 that we have been studying to pray the prayer of intercession today. And then we will round up with our text for the day, which is Psalm 22 verses 19 through 21. I hope you studied the whole of Psalm, uh, Psalm 21. So in John chapter 17, Jesus himself, our intercessor, oh, as I'm just saying that I cannot run away from going to just read um, that uh, intercession of the Holy Spirit and of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ himself for us. So Romans chapter 8, and so we'll come back because while we intercede, the Holy Spirit helps us and Jesus Christ himself helps us to intercede. Now let's look at uh, Romans chapter 8, Romans chapter 8, 
verse 26. Likewise, the Spirit also helps in our weakness, for we do not know what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit himself makes intercession. Can you see that? For us, with groanings which cannot be uttered, so he stands in the gap as well for us. Well, when we ourselves come and pray, it's not when you're sleeping, doing nothing, as you pray, the Holy Spirit intercedes for you. The same Romans chapter 8, let's jump to verse 34. Verse 34, read it with me, please. Who is he who condemns? It is Christ who died. And furthermore, is also reason, who is even at the right hand of God, who also makes intercession for us. Have you seen the duty of Christ now? He's interceding, intercession. Are you ready? Are you ready to intercede? Oh, glory be to God. And raise your voice to heaven now and say, Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father, thank you for giving me the ministry of intercession. I accept that intercessory ministry and I, receive, and I accept the responsibility. Heavenly Father, Thank you for giving me the ministry of intercession. I accept the ministry and I accept the responsibility thereof. And now, Lord, help me by your spirit and indeed make me an intercessor. Go ahead and pray that prayer. Father God, I thank you for giving me the ministry of intercession. I accept the intercessory ministry. I accept the responsibility thereof. And now, Lord, I pray, oh God, indeed make me effective intercessor. Make me an effective intercessor. I yield myself to you, body, soul, and spirit. God Almighty, help me by your spirit, the spirit of intercession, the Holy Spirit that helps me to intercede. Help me in prayer. Help me now to intercede. Make me an intercessor. Make me an effective intercessor. Make us, Almighty God, effective intercessors. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Now raise your voice to heaven and say, Father God, Almighty God, I thank you for the abundant life that you have given to me by all the promises you have made according to your word and your everlasting covenant. Father, I thank you for the abundant life you have given to me through my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, according to your word and the everlasting covenant that you have made with me and I have entered into with you. And now, almighty God, I pray whatever in my life is not in line with your promises and not in line with your everlasting covenant, let it cease, the work cease, the function cease to be whatever in my life. And you know what those things are. Now go ahead and pray. Pray to God. Pray to God. That abundant life must manifest in your life and in my life. Whatever is not according to God's promise, recorded in the scriptures, according to the promises of God in the scriptures, according to the promises of God by the everlasting covenant that God Almighty has made with me, made with you, made with his children, made with his church, that Jesus Christ has said, I have come, that they may have life and have it more abundantly. Whatever is not according to that everlasting covenant, is not according to the will of God, the promises of God. Cease to walk in my body, in my soul, in my spirit. Cease to function in my life. Go ahead and pray for yourself. Focus on yourself, friends. Focus on yourself. And as you pray that prayer, whatever the spirit puts in your heart, yes, just go ahead and pray. Stand against it. For, yeah, but for the spirit of intercession is walking in you. Go ahead and stand in the gap. Lord God Almighty, whatever is not in line with the covenant, the covenant that you have made with me and I have entered into with you by the blood of Jesus. Whatever is not, Lord God Almighty, I reject it. I renounce it in my own life, in my own life, in the name of Jesus. 
Father God, every strange experience. Father God, whatever, whatever does not work in me according to your everlasting covenant, according to the abundant life in Christ Jesus that Jesus has given to me, God Almighty, let it cease. Whatever is not, let it cease. Let it cease. Let it cease. In the name of Jesus, let it cease now. Let it cease. Go ahead and pray for yourself. Pray for yourself. Father God, in my own life, in my own life, whatever is not according to your promise, is not according to your everlasting covenant, let it cease to work, let it cease to function, let it be terminated now in my life. I terminate it. I terminate it in Jesus' mighty name. We are praying. We're going to pray that prayer again. And we're going to look at the entire dimension. Pray that again. I say, Heavenly Father, every tree you have not planted in my life, in my body, in my soul, in my spirit, let it be uprooted. Let it be uprooted. Uproot it now, Lord God Almighty. Uproot it, Almighty God, from my body, from my soul, from my spirit. Whatever you have not planted, God Almighty, uproot it in the name of Jesus. Pray for yourself. Pray for yourself, for we're going to touch on many things. Pray, 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 pray. Father God, whatever you have not planted in my body, in my soul, in my spirit, Lord, uproot it. Let it be uprooted. Let it be uprooted in Jesus' name. Pray again and say, Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father, anything in the spiritual, in the physical, in the material realm, in the social, mental, emotional, logical realms, all realms of life and existence that is contrary to your will in my life. Right now, Lord, I reject it, I renounce it, and I ask, Father, terminate it, let it cease to walk, let it cease to function in the mighty name of Jesus. Let it cease to walk, let it cease to function. Let the end of every strange experience in my life, spiritually, physically, socially, materially, mentally, emotionally, in my life, logically, in all level and dimensions of life and existence, in the spiritual, in the physical, in the heaven above, on the earth, beneath the earth, wherever and whatever it may be, let it cease, let it be terminated right now, let it come to an end now, 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 in my life, in the name of Jesus, let it come to an end. In the mighty name of Jesus. Go ahead and pray this prayer one more time. Say, Heavenly Father, I soak myself in the blood of the everlasting covenant. I soak myself in the blood of the everlasting covenant. The blood of sprinkling that speaks better things than that of heaven. Let that blood speak now in my life. The blood of Jesus. Let the blood of the everlasting covenant speak forth. The promises of God, the blessings of the everlasting covenant in my life, and let every other voice cease in my life, cease in my life, cease in my life, in the spiritual, in the physical, in the material, in the social dimension, in all dimensions, in the logical level, every level of life and existence. Let the blood of Jesus speak for me now, speak for me now, O oh, blood of the Lamb of God, speak for me, the blood of sprinkling that speaks better things than that of ever. Whatever has been spoken in the night, in the day, in the dark, in the light, whatever has been spoken in the spiritual, in the physical, cease to walk, cease to function, except it is by the Spirit of God, except it is by the blood of Jesus, except it is according to the promise of God for my life. In the mighty name of Jesus, go ahead and pray for yourself, pray for yourself, pray for yourself, in the name of Jesus. Father God, Father God, let no other voice, let no other blood speak in my life in the name of Jesus. Now, we're going to pray for our families. Extend now to your family. Extend now to your family and to one another. Every one of us connected here. Father, all this prayer, we pray for our families. Now pray for that child. Pray for that your son. Pray for that your daughter. Pray for that your wife. Pray for that your, 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 your husband. Pray for all that concerns you. Go ahead and intercede. The will of God must, must happen in your life. Intercession is about bringing the will of God to bear. Bringing the will of God, the plan of God. In, and it's about 
and bringing the justice of God to prevail is about uh, uh, terminating every walk of the enemy. It is about pleading that the mercy of God will prevail such that the righteousness of God, the will of God comes to pass. Go ahead and pray for your family. Father God, I pray for my family. I pray for my wife. I pray for my children. Lord God Almighty, let your will alone stand. Lord, I pray every tree you have not planted in my family, let it be uprooted now. Every tree God has not planted in my family, in the name of Jesus, be uprooted. I uproot you and I ask God Almighty, my Father, the stronger than he, Jesus Christ, that every tree that you have not planted in my life, in my family, in my wife, in my children, be uprooted. Be uprooted. Uprooted, Lord, for us. Uprooted for my brothers. Uprooted for my sisters. Uprooted for everyone that is connected upon this platform, upon this meeting, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Father, arise on our behalf. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, our Lord and our God. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. I want us to read John chapter 17. I said Jesus prayed there. So let's look at it and then we'll pray, for, we'll pray more. From verse 9, from verse 9. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ prayed here. He said, I pray for them. I do not pray for the world, but for those whom you have given me, for they are yours, and all mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I am glorified in them. Now I am no longer in the world, but these are in the world, and I come to you, Holy Father, keep through your name those whom you have given me, that they may be one as we are. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in your name. Those whom you gave me, I have kept, and none of them is lost except the son of perdition, that the scripture might be fulfilled. That in, but now I come to you, and these things I speak in the world, that they may have my joy fulfilled in themselves. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them because they are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. 15, I do not pray that you should take them out of the world, but that you should keep them from the evil one. There is always intercession. The evil one must be stopped by the power of intercession, by the prayer of intercession. 16, he said they are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. Sanctify them by your truth. The word is true. 18, as you sent me into the world, I also have sent them into the world. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself, that they also may be sanctified by the truth. Here 20, which is our last verse for today. He said, I do not pray for this alone, but also for those who will believe in me through their word. So Jesus prayed for us, interceding. So let's raise our voices again to heaven and pray for one another and say, Heavenly Father, I plead your mercy, by your mercy. Keep me, keep me, keep me, Lord God Almighty, keep me. By your mercy, keep me. By your mercy, keep my family, my wife, my children. By your mercy, keep my brothers and sisters, every one of us. Lord God Almighty, that is connected upon this program right now, who have come to intercede, Lord, for you to prevail, for your will to be done in our lives. Lord, we ask together, keep us open. Keep us from the evil one. Keep us from all evil. Keep us and our families, Father God. Lord, let every power of evil be terminated, be destroyed in our lives. In the mighty name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, let's pray. Say, Heavenly Father, whatever evil any one of us has experienced, we agree right now that that evil ceases to work, ceases to function, let that evil come to an end. 
And in Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Now we're going to ask together as a father, let your perfect will, your perfect will be done in our lives, in my life. All your promises, according to the original Abrahamic covenant of blessing that Jesus Christ, my Lord and my Savior, has extended to me, has brought me into, as it is written. Jesus Christ, uh, uh, curse is everyone that hangs on a tree, that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus, that we might obtain the promise of the Spirit through faith. That promise of God has come to me. The blessing of Abraham is my portion. Father God, pour that blessing upon every one of us. Let that abundant life, abundant joy, abundant peace, abundant prosperity, abundant life in all ramifications manifest in my life, manifest in my family in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Abundant life, abundant life, abundant joy, abundant peace, the fruit of the Spirit, the manifestation of the Holy Spirit in our life. Let it be our portion, a portion of every one of us here right now, in the mighty name of Jesus. Go ahead and pray. Father, by your mercy, by your mercy, by your mercy, we plead, oh God, let your perfect will be done in our life. Let every walk of darkness be terminated in our life, be terminated in our family, be terminated in our businesses, be terminated in our careers, be terminated in our ministries, in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, our Lord and our God. Glory be to your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. I want to pray, I want us to pray specifically now concerning that person that has been having evil dreams. Evil dreams. Someone you have been struggling. In fact, two dimensions, as I just speak now, two dimensions as have come to me. As somebody, you don't remember anything that you dream. And then the other one, your, the power of dream, the power of dream, which ought to be your strong point or which has been your strong point, has become weakened and you are worried. Your power of dream has been weakened and you are worried. Want to pray. So let us agree, we are, we are going to pray now that Father God anoint that eye, the eye of dream, the eyes of dream of that man, of that woman, of that brother and of that sister, let the eyes of dream be restored unto that person in the name of Jesus. And then we're gonna agree that the power behind that uh, uh, um, uh, um, uh, dream, uh, that, that evil dream, that you dream you don't remember, the power behind it be destroyed totally. Let's cast out that spirit behind that evil dream that you dream you don't remember because it means there is something behind that dream. That's why the same power makes you not to remember. Let's pray together, pray with me. In the name of Jesus, Heavenly Father, anoint our eyes, the eyes of dream. That we will dream and we will remember. We will have your revelation, oh God Almighty, by the Spirit of God and even through dreams in the name of Jesus. And Lord God Almighty, we pray, oh God Almighty, the power behind the evil dream that we dream and we don't remember, let that power be destroyed now. Let that evil uh, power, evil spirit, that darkness behind that light behind that evil dream, let it cease, let it come to an end. We cast you out. We take authority over you in the name of Jesus. And command your operation to cease, cease to walk, cease to function in that light, in the name of Jesus. From now on, our eyes of dreams are restored. The eyes of dreams are restored. In fact, you will stand with your eyes open and you will see trances. In the name of Jesus, Almighty God, anoint our eyes with his eyes sharp that we'll begin to see the things of God that God has really given unto us to see. In the name of Jesus, I decree in the name of Jesus, be restored. In the name of Jesus, be restored. In the name of Jesus, be restored. Your eyes of dream, your eyes of vision, be restored. In the name of Jesus, our eyes of Dreams, our eyes of visions be restored in the name of Jesus. 
and I command the power that has blocked those eyes of dreams, those eyes of visions, to be removed right now. Let that power perish. I cast out that spirit behind that barrier, that blockade, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, our Lord and our God. In the name of Jesus. Oh, to you be all glory, our Father and our King. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Let us go to Psalm 22. Psalm 22. Complete follower. Psalm 22. See, Psalm 22 is a very deep psalm. I would explain this maybe another time. You know, David is one man that God raised up as a unique person. David occupied the office of a priest, of a prophet, of a king. And so often God will show him something in uh, the, the that God will, will, God will, 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 will put him in that space as a priest, as a, a prophet, as a king. And so here David in the spirit was praying for Jesus Christ. And you would see Jesus Christ pray this prayer at the time of his trial, the time that in, in the flesh, in the last moment, in the last hour. For example, Psalm 22, verse 1. That's why I said, I, I would, I'm just summarizing. It's deeper, far deeper than what I've just told you, but I hope that gives you an understanding. So Psalm 22, verse 1, he said, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? So, uh, you will take that as a prophecy. But G David was actually praying in the spirit, praying ahead, because as the king whom Jesus is, David in the spirit here was praying as the king in his own situation and circumstance. And you know Jesus on the cross prayed this prayer, cried out, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from helping me? So let's go to, with that understanding now, and everything in Psalm 22, you would see, reflect what Jesus experienced either praying or people saying to him, oh, you want me to touch on another one? All right, let's go, let's go. Our time is fast spent. Verse 19, verse 19 to 21. Read it with me and then we'll turn it into prayer. He said, but you, O oh Lord, do not be far from me. Oh, my strength, hasten to help me. Deliver me from the sword, my precious life from the power of the dog. Save me from the lion's mouth and from the horns of the wild oxen. You have answered me. If you use New King James Version, you will see that the me there and the you are all capital. In capital letters, start with capital letters, showing Jesus. So as you're praying in your own state, because we have come into Christ, I want you to understand the depth of this prayer. You are connecting with the intercessory prayer of Jesus Christ for you. Are you there now? Are you following? Just like David already ahead interceded for Jesus Christ. And Jesus connected at that moment with the intercession. That same intercession is continuing. As I said, I would need time to teach us this one deeper. Are you ready to pray with me? So I want you to really see Jesus in his intercessory place for you. 
and you are connecting with him now to the Father. Oh, and we are all connecting together. And pray with me and say, Oh, Lord God, my Father, do not be far from me now. Oh, God, my strength, hasten to help me now. Deliver me, Lord God Almighty, from the sword and from every sword, Lord. Deliver my precious soul, Lord God Almighty, my precious life from the power of the dog. Save me, Lord, from the lion's mouth. Whatever the lion has picked in its mouth is about to bite. Whatever the lion has got with its mouth, Lord, to swallow, deliver me, O oh God. Deliver my household, O oh God. Deliver my ministry, O oh God. Deliver my life, deliver my soul, deliver my spirit. Deliver all that concerns me, Lord, from the lion's mouth and from the horns of the wild oxen. The wild oxen, the horns of the wild oxen that has scattered my life. The horns of the wild oxen that has tried to destroy my destiny. The horn of the wild oxen that has tried to destroy my family. The horn of the wild oxen that has tried to scatter my business. The horn of the wild oxen that has tried to scatter my finances. The horn of the wild oxen that has tried to scatter me in the spiritual, in the physical, in the material, and in every dimension and realm of life. Lord, the horn of the wild oxen, save me from the lion's mouth and save me from the horn of the wild oxen. Cut them off, Father, from my life in the mighty name of Jesus. By your mercy, O oh God, do not be far from me. Hasten and help me now. Hasten and help us now. We plead your mercy, O oh God. Hasten and help my wife. Hasten and help my children. Hasten and help my brothers and sisters and their families. Every family that is connected upon this program. Lord, by your mercy, hasten and help us. Do not be far from us. We come to you, Jesus, the one who intercedes for us, our intercessor. We come by the Holy Spirit of God. The one who intercedes for us with groaning, intercede now, oh God. Intercede now, my Father, prevail. Intervene now, our Father. Hasten to help us. Hasten to help us. Deliver us from the soul. Deliver our precious life from the power of the dog. Save us, oh God, from the lion's mouth and from the horns of the wild oxen. In the mighty name of Jesus, pray with me and say, Father, we thank you for you have answered us. We thank you, Lord, for you have heard us and you have answered us. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. And a glorious amen. We're going to round that off. So now you take one minute and pray for your own specific areas using the scripture. What are those things that have worried you? Pray. Pray. Jesus, your intercessor, will intervene. The power of God will intervene. Go ahead and pray. Has intervened in the name of Jesus. Go ahead and ask. Go ahead and ask. Go ahead and ask. One minute. Go ahead and ask. Lord, God Almighty, let it end in my life. Let it end in the life of your children. Whatever is negative, whatever power of darkness, it is written. It is written. You have delivered us from the power of darkness and have translated us into the kingdom of the son of your love, your kingdom of light. We have no business with darkness. Darkness! 
Jesus, lose your power and get out of my life, get out of my family, get out of my wife, get out of my children, get out of the families of my brothers and sisters, everyone that is connected here. In the name of Jesus, cease to walk, cease to function. In the name of Jesus, go ahead and pray for yourself. Go ahead and pray for yourself. 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 In Psalm 7, verse 9, so you can pray more. The Bible says, Oh, let the wickedness of the wicked come to an end. Then establish the just, for the righteous God tests the heart and minds. Let the wickedness of the wicked come to an end. Every wickedness of the wicked in your life, in my life, in your family, in my family, in our family, in the families of the children of God all over the earth, I command you cease in the name of Jesus, according to the word of God. Let the wickedness of the wicked come to an end. We have no part with the wicked. We have been transformed, translated from darkness into light. We have no part with darkness. Darkness seeks, darkness get out in the name of Jesus. It is written for this purpose, the son of God was made manifest that he might destroy the works of the devil. Every work of the devil in my life be destroyed. Every walk of the devil in my family be destroyed. Every walk of the devil in the families of my brothers and sisters be destroyed. Every walk of the devil in my nation be destroyed. In the land be destroyed. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now let's agree together, brothers and sisters. This intercession is also about the land, which is, let's pray and say, Heavenly Father. By your mercy, we stand in the gap for our land. We stand in the gap for our, uh, our land, our environment, our communities, our nations. We stand in the gap. And we ask, oh God Almighty, wherever we are, let your light shine. Let your righteousness prevail. Let no evil, let no evil stand. Oh God Almighty. In this year, 2022, Lord, we plead your mercy upon the nations of the earth. And we ask, Lord, that the powers of the dog will perish, but your righteousness will reign. Your righteousness will reign. Let your righteousness reign, oh God. Let your righteousness reign in the name of Jesus all over the world, and particularly in our neighborhood, in our environment, in our families, in our communities, Lord, let your light shine forth. Let your righteousness shine forth and prevail. Let your will be done, oh God. We enforce and we establish the will of God by the power of the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. Let your truth prevail. And every lie, every lie, every lie, evil scheme and gang up of men, let them fail. Let them come to nothing. And let your righteousness prevail, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. Lord God Almighty, we pray for those that are suffering untold hardship at this point in time. We ask by your mercy, O oh God, save, deliver. Lord, help the world. Help the entire nation, uh, nations of the earth. Help the entire nations of the earth. Let all the evil, Lord, that men have perpetrated that has caused untold suffering, in the world, let them come to an end. Let them come to an end. Lord God Almighty, let your judgment prevail. It is the time of your judgment in the earth. And so, Lord, by your justice, deliver the righteous. Let your justice prevail. Let your justice and your judgment prevail. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, our Lord and our God. And in Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Finally, brethren, you know this program. It's time of refreshing. And we will always have to be refreshed in the Holy Spirit. Just as we started, we want to round off with that refreshing. And so go ahead and pray. 
and tell him and say, Heavenly Father, let your living water, the water of life, flow all over me. Say, Father, let that well, well, make my belly, make my belly, you can put your hand, a well of living water. Oh, let my belly, we'll pray it tomorrow more. Let my belly be a well of living water. And let that living water, which is your Holy Spirit, the water of life, flow in me and flow through me now. Oh, water of life, the water of life, the Holy Spirit of God, flow in me, flow in me now. Go ahead and pray. And if you can speak in tongues, just go ahead and speak in tongues. Let that water of life flow in me now, flow in me. In the name of Jesus, Father God, let my belly be a well, a well of this living water. Make my belly a well of your living water and let the living water flow from my belly as the scripture has said. Out of my belly shall flow rivers of living water. Let the rivers of living water flow, 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 flow all over me, flow, flow, flow out of me and impact my, uh, my, my, my world, impact my world, impact my world spiritually, physically, and in all areas and dimensions of life and existence in the name of Jesus. Thank you, our Lord and our God. To you be all glory in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Want to round off now? Tomorrow, as I've already said, our focus is the baptism of the Holy Spirit. The baptism of the Holy Spirit. And so that's our focus, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And we are still going to use so well. And our text is John chapter 7, verses 37 to 39. John chapter 7, verses 37 to 39. That's our focus for tomorrow. Oh, we will drink of this water of life, and this water of life will continue to uh, flow in us in the name of Jesus. So tomorrow, as a focus, um, and again, 6 p.m., we will connect. So we continue with the fasting and prayer and studying of the word, the synoptic gospels that we have been reading. Glory be to God. Today, uh, we studied John chapter 20, right? So tomorrow will be the last chapter of the book of John, John chapter 21. So. Um, it's, it's wonderful. It's just wonderful. I'm, I'm short of words. But let's round off now. Let's round off. Perhaps there's still anything you haven't yet committed to God or the Spirit has put in your mind you want to commit to God. So just go ahead and commit it to God as we're about to round off. And also pray that the Lord will give you strength to continue to wait upon him as we continue in this program. Let's bring our prayer to a close. I want to round off now. Heavenly Father, thank you so much. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for how you have helped us to pray. Oh, thank you, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. How oh, it's so beautiful to come and just ask in your name. You've given us the power of attorney to ask anything in your name. You've given us the right, Jesus. It's so wonderful. It's so glorious. And we thank you for the confidence that we have in you, Heavenly Father, that all that we have asked, you have heard us and you have done it for us in the name of Jesus. And so we thank you for answering all our prayers in the name of Jesus. And now we ask, Spirit of the living God, beyond what we have asked, please continue to intercede for us. Let the perfect will of God, that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God for our lives, for our families, for our nations, and for the entire earth be done today, this year, and for the rest of our lives. 
in the mighty name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, we commit the rest of this program. Commit day three into your hand. Day four, day five, day six. Until the end of this program, we commit all into your hand. Lord, we ask that you will continue to lead us. And we pray, Lord, for as many as you have ordained to be blessed by this program. Draw them to yourself. In the mighty name of Jesus, let all glory be to you, Lord, for that which you have done and for that which you will continue to do. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Let's share the grace, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me, shall follow you, shall follow us all the days of our lives. And we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Beloved, if you have been blessed, I want to uh, ask you to invite somebody. Invite your friends to come and be blessed, especially tomorrow with our focus on the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So once again, it is time of refreshing by the Holy Spirit. Come one, come all, and be renewed and be refreshed by the Spirit of God. The Almighty God bless you. And I look forward to uh, connecting with you tomorrow. God bless you. Bye-bye.